This has been an ongoing issue in my family for a while, but now that the wedding is coming up, everything has come to a head. I, 50 male, have a daughter, Emma, 26 female, who I've always had a very close relationship with. I've been married to my wife, Emma's mom, Laura, 49 female, for 30 years now. We're a solid family, or at least I thought we were. Here's the backstory. Emma met her now fiancé, Tom, 28 male, a couple of years ago. Things moved fast between them and she was head over heels for him. We were initially happy for her, but something changed about a year into their relationship. Emma became distant from us, especially her mom. Laura and Emma used to be really close, but suddenly Emma started snapping at her for little things, avoiding family dinners and not sharing anything about her life. Then we found out why. About a year and a half ago, I overheard Emma and Tom having a conversation when they didn't know I was around. She was saying horrible things about her mom, stuff that really broke my heart. Emma told Tom that she couldn't stand how overbearing her mom was, that Laura always tried to control her, and that she felt like Laura was jealous of her life and success. She even said she resents her mom for putting so much pressure on her when she was younger. I was floored. Laura has always supported Emma in everything she did, from helping her through college to emotionally supporting her during rough patches. I never saw any of this coming. But instead of addressing it right then, I wanted to wait and talk to Emma calmly later. She completely shut down when I finally brought it up and got defensive. She claimed I was taking her mom's side and didn't understand what it was like to grow up with someone who was always in your business. She said some really hurtful things and ended up storming out. After that, she cut off her mom entirely, except for the bare minimum communication for holidays or family events. Laura's heartbroken. I'm angry. It's been a mess. Fast forward to now, Emma's getting married. She called me last week to ask if I would walk her down the aisle. But here's the thing. I don't feel right doing it when she's treating her mother like this. Laura's not even invited to the wedding. Emma said it would make things too uncomfortable if her mom was there. I told Emma that I can't walk her down the aisle if she's excluding her mom, who's done nothing but love and support her all her life. I said that I wouldn't be a part of the wedding until she made things right with her mom. Emma was furious. She accused me of choosing mom over her and said I was ruining her big day and claimed I was punishing her for being honest about her feelings. She's now threatening to go no contact with both of us and I'm torn up inside. I love my daughter, but I can't stand by and watch her treat her mother like this. Am I the idiot for refusing to walk my daughter down the aisle because of what she did to her mom? You are the idiot. You'll never know the perspective of a child with the other parent. So much goes on behind the scenes. Your reactive response to punish her for feelings that are valid during a private conversation by withholding on her special day, wedding, is absolutely wild. Don't be surprised when she goes no contact with you and doesn't visit you in the old folks' home. You need to walk her down the aisle and not twist this into something it's not. She has disinvited and cut off your wife. You may be next, especially if she's tolerated you ignoring or enabling or just not seeing how your wife treated her. Her asking you a week before she married might have been her last attempt with you. You need to find out what happened between your daughter and her mom a year and a half ago. This didn't come out of nowhere. She met Tom's mom and is now comparing them. Lord knows I knew my mother was awful, but it didn't hit me how awful until I got to know my mother-in-law. My God, I miss that woman. OP, I guess your wife was overbearing to your daughter and you completely ignored it or accepted it as normal, which is a strong possibility. I disagree. Tom is the problem here and is isolating Emma from people she loves. As to OP, you're not the idiot. You're standing up for your wife who has been hurt by your daughter's actions. Understandably, you don't feel right walking Emma down the aisle when she's excluding and disrespecting her mom. Your refusal isn't about punishing Emma, but about wanting her to make things right with her mother. Emma's reaction shows she's unwilling to address the deeper issue, but you're doing what you believe is right for your family. I, 35 male, have been married to my wife, 32 female, for five years, and we've struggled financially for the past few months. I lost my job about three months ago, and while I found part-time work, it doesn't pay nearly as much as before. We've had to cut back on many things, but it feels like no matter what we do, we're still living paycheck to paycheck and even pulling from savings. Recently, my mother, 65 female, came over to visit, and she noticed how stressed I was about the money situation. She offered some advice on how to save money, things like cutting down on takeout, meal prepping to avoid buying groceries multiple times a week, and switching to cheaper brands. 
My mom has always been frugal, especially when raising me and my siblings on a tight budget. I thought it made sense, especially since we're trying to save wherever possible. I asked if she would go through our spending and show where we could cut down. My wife agreed with this. She made a whole spreadsheet about our spending and we spend way too much on fun stuff. We don't need Starbucks every day and so on. It also became apparent that most of the fun spending was my wife's. Honestly, my wife didn't take the breakdown well and started arguing with my mom that her spreadsheet was wrong. She said my mom's way of doing things is outdated and doesn't work for us. She doesn't want to give up buying organic produce and she likes having variety in what we eat each week. I tried to explain that we needed to make some sacrifices to get out of this financial hole, but she kept insisting that things weren't as bad as I was making them out to be and that we just needed to ride it out. My mom left at this point and we were still arguing and she told me she couldn't give up her takeout. She also went on about my mom being wrong. That's when I lost my patience and said, you're freaking wrong, my mom is right. She managed to raise three kids on one income and we can't even cut back on groceries for a few months. My wife got really upset, saying I was being a huge jerk for siding with my mom and that my mom was outdated. She's barely spoken to me since, and now I'm wondering if I went too far. But the way I see it, we need to be realistic about our situation, and my mom's advice could help get us back on track. Everyone's the idiot here, except your mom, God bless her. You absolutely should not have yelled at your wife, that was wrong. Your wife should not call your mother's approach outdated. Nothing is outdated about living within one's means and cutting back on luxuries when finances are tight. Your mom's approach was spot on. It was systematic and could help you concretely see where your money was going so you could make informed decisions rather than make some meaningless cuts in one area while wasting money in another. You owe your wife an apology. She owes you and your mom an apology. Your wife's an idiot and I'm guessing it's because much of the bad spending was on your wife's part so she may feel attacked. Not the idiot, but your wife certainly is. She claims your mom's ways are outdated when they're just realistic. You and your wife absolutely need to get on the same page regarding finances, otherwise the issue will never be resolved and your current situation will become normal. The single most important financial decision you can make is who you marry. I have a daughter, Julie, a teen from a previous relationship. A son, kindergartner with my wife, and two stepkids, female teen, female tween. My siblings always adored Julia. I was very young when I had her, so they helped me a lot to raise her, and she was the sweetest kid. Then I met my wife. My wife wanted to be Julia's mom. Julia wasn't interested in that. She already has two aunts who are basically like her moms. My wife tried to reduce our contact with my family, which made my siblings very angry and upset Julia. After this, they never accepted my wife as a part of our family. Even when they invite the whole family to parties or gatherings, only Julia and I are invited. The problem is we are financially struggling. My wife was in an accident a few years ago and now she can't work much because of her back problems. The stepkid's dad is a deadbeat and I don't make that much money. I can provide everything the kids need, but I can't provide the things they want. My siblings, however, can spoil Julia by giving her everything she asks for, whether it's takeout because she doesn't like that night's dinner, new clothes because she wants to try a new style, private school because she doesn't like going to public school, or, our newest problem, buying new furniture for her room because it's gotten old and boring for her. My wife thinks this is excessive. She thinks the new furniture should go to her daughters, who have used the furniture since they were in preschool. She claims Julia doesn't need it because she bought new furniture just four years ago. I told her that this wouldn't happen because they'd bought it all for Julia and it wasn't right to take it away from her. She then insisted that Julia's old furniture should go to her daughters. I spoke to Julia about this, but she said no because her uncle was supposed to sell them and give their money to Julia to add to her savings and she wants her money. My brother won't agree with this. When I told my wife that this was also not happening, she got very mad and started yelling and calling me an idiot. I don't know what to do now. Am I the idiot for not forcing my daughter to give up her furniture? Wait a darn minute. Why did you marry, procreate with, and then stay married to someone who tried to separate Julia from her support system? The furniture, much like the Iranian yogurt, is not the issue here. You are the idiot for getting poor Julia in this mess. I love how completely passive he is. My wife limited her time with family. My wife wanted to be her mom. They buy her takeout if she doesn't like what's for dinner. Dude, do you even parent?
Exactly. How did your wife limit her time with her family? Whatever she did or said made them not want to support your son. Just let Julia live with her aunt. The controlling evil stepmonster is raging angry because, checks notes, her aunties wish to replace the bedroom furniture for their niece, all because her children aren't getting anything. Most struggling families would be grateful for such an act. Can you understand that this is not a rational response? Your wife literally hates your daughter. Literally. All because she didn't let her replace her mother. Pure evil. You can't erase a little girl's mother from her heart. So far, the wife has brought in two other kids for OP to support, tried to take his daughter's family away, and found a reason to stop working. Now she wants to steal his daughter's gifts to give to her kids. She's absolutely an idiot, and so is OP. I want to start by saying that I, 32 female, am in love with my husband, 39. I know I'll never find another love like this, but I don't know if love is enough anymore. We've been together for 13 years, nine of which he was a student. I worked full-time the entire time to provide for us. His and my parents helped a lot too. His parents paid for his tuition and mine paid for rent for many years, and I paid for the day-to-day -day stuff, bills, trips, gifts, and rent eventually, etc. During my entire time in school, he would make comments and promises about me not having to work anymore or work less. I have chronic illnesses, so it's difficult for me to hold down a 9 to 5. I opened my own business six years ago. He's been incredibly supportive and helpful throughout those six years, but he's now been out of school for three years and has yet to find a joke. While I joke about wanting to retire, I don't actually mean it. I want to feel a bit more secure with a double income. After supporting him for over a decade in school, I want to be able to lean on him a bit too. I feel resentful because when I mentioned, once, that I only make enough for one person to live comfortably, he was quick to say that he only eats, so what are you on about? When the point is, I take care of all our bills, plan all our trips, or should I just start taking solo trips, do the grocery shopping and planning, and generally manage the entire house, including planning dates? While he does a lot around the house, he also needs to be asked. He's admitted that his mental health has played a significant role in his ability to apply for jobs, which I'm empathetic to. He has a hard time focusing, but he also refuses therapy or medication to help ease his anxiety. He says he just wants to zone out whenever I want to and distract myself, but I don't feel like he's dealing with anything by doing that. I feel tired and I can't rely on him to get a job or take care of the home without my help, but I also don't want to end our relationship. We've been together for so long and I don't want to give up. I just feel underappreciated to the max, which I've told him. I don't know, I just wish he would try and work on himself. These days, I keep thinking more and more often about what if I left. I'm afraid to, I think, more than anything, but I'm really struggling to see this as my life for the rest of my life. Not the idiot. He sounds like he has it made. Doesn't have to work and barely helps around the house unless specifically asked to do so. If I couldn't work or help out around the house and blame it on an untreated mental illness that I refuse to get help for, then I would too. Still, sadly, I'm destined to be a working, functioning adult who has to take care of my mental health so I can pay bills and do my fair share in the household. I'd be exhausted if I were you. You have a chronic illness yet are doing more than your share. A marriage is a partnership. I'm not sure how you haven't built resentment towards him and still want to be with him. You're a better woman than I'll ever be. You're not a baby. You're fed up. Stop with the darn excuses. He needs to grow a pair and man up. It's hard for him to come to terms with. Seriously, forget that. You are babying and enabling the lazy man baby he is since you were what? A 19-year-old? Don't wait. It'll only get worse. He's leeching off you and your mental health is being damaged. You can't pour from an empty cup. He's actively hurting your mental health, refusing help, and then crying me, me, me. But, but, she loves him. I've seen too many women like this, in love and totally taken advantage of. If you just met him, would you think an almost 40-year-old man who hasn't had a job in a decade and was supported by his family was in any way a desirable dating candidate? Life would be easier without him. You'd have more money and less stress. Hun, he's a loser. I, 23 female, had a relationship with my now ex, 35 male, for almost two years. I'm aware of the age difference, and if you'd say it was a red flag, you'd be 100% right, but I didn't realize it then. I did love him very much, though. That's why when he suddenly broke up with me and blocked me everywhere, it really broke me. 
The only explanation he gave me was a message that he was done with me. I racked my brain blaming myself. I tried to reach him in the weeks after because I wanted to understand, but he blocked me. I even messaged two of his friends, asking if they knew what happened, but one didn't reply to me and the other was quite cold. His sister and parents deleted me from social media. It was awful. Therapy has made me realize some of the toxic tendencies he had and how bad some of it was, but I'm still getting over everything that happened. Then, over two months after all of that went down, I found out I was pregnant. It's been a struggle. Seeing how far along I was, I eventually decided against it. I tried to message him again, but he still blocked me. I sent a friend request to his family, which they refused. I sent a message to a non-friend saying that I really needed to speak to them, but they never replied. At that point, I stopped trying, which is where I could have been the idiot, though there are other things I probably could have tried. Truth is, I didn't want to see him or them. It was all very painful. I'm now visibly quite pregnant, and lo and behold, I ran into his sister. We didn't talk, but I guess she noticed me and did the math. Not even a day later, I got a message from my ex. He asked me if I was pregnant. I said yes. He asked me if it was his. I didn't reply, but I guess he already made the correct assumption. Now he's angry at me. Told me I should have told him, and I reminded him he was the one who suddenly disappeared from my life and blocked me. He said that with this kind of news, I should have tried harder and that I purposely kept him out of it. I'm at a loss here. Am I the idiot? Should I have tried harder? Hun, tell him to go screw himself. Seriously, don't take any crap off this idiot. You tried. He's the idiot who ran away like a coward instead of having the nerve to end things face to face. He's the immature little boy who got his friends and family to block and ignore you rather than just have a conversation. He's supposed to be a grown adult, but teenage boys behave better than this. You did absolutely nothing wrong. Keep your head held high and know this guy is an overgrown man-child who doesn't deserve an ounce of your respect or your time. Do not put him on the birth certificate unless you want financial support. Make him have to get a court-ordered DNA test to prove paternity. However, if you can support yourself and your child, I would personally go it alone. Neither you nor your child need a man like that. This would be denying the child crucial financial support. In fact, if you can, I would consider moving back to your family before you give birth. You'll have a support system close by. You'll hopefully be far enough away from him and his toxic family so that your child won't be subjected to constant visitation with them and sue him for child support. That works if he's not a deadbeat. My brother did something similar and that idiot pays $35 per month. Block him and cut him off completely. You don't need his toxicity in your life especially with your pregnancy and expected baby. You're better off not receiving child support and not having to be in contact with this man.